So catheter ablation is an invasive procedure where we're trying to take away the triggers and alter the uh, substrate within the heart, within the atrium, to increase the likelihood of maintaining sinus rhythm. So that procedure involves uh, normally a day in a hospital and a night, and they go home the next day. Uh, tubes are it's, it's normally done either under conscious sedation or general anaesthetic. Tubes are inserted into the leg, and through those we position catheters inside the heart, cross over to the left-hand side, and then either using balloons, cryo-balloons, or catheters to do point-by-point -point ablation, we isolate the pulmonary veins to take away the triggers causing the atrial fibrillation, and then if necessary go on to do further ablation, all with the hope of maintaining sinus rhythm. So um, we'll often, the first contact that we'll get with the patient will be a GP referral letter. Uh, that will be obviously re re reviewed and if, it, uh, if it's discussing an AF patient, then the first things that we do would be to organise for an echocardiogram to be done before they come to the clinic. Uh, then they'll have a 24-hour tape halter monitor, so a, rhythm, uh, a, a monitor to record their heart rhythm over 24 hours. Um, and then when they come to the clinic, they'll uh, be given a quality of life AF questionnaire to help us assess how pulp their palpitations and their arrhythmia affects their daily life and also their concerns about that uh, arrhythmia. Patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, so that's patients having attacks of AF that are relatively short lasting, they are the patients who do best with catheter ablation and often they're the patients who have most uh, troublesome symptoms compared to patients who are in atrial fibrillation all the time. I think if a patient's having severe symptoms that are, seem likely to be caused by their atrial fibrillation, um, then they should be referred at, at that point. Um, if they've been tried on a number of drugs, perhaps without much effect, then you know, they should definitely be referred and if there's any concern that the atrial fibrillation might be related to underlying heart disease, you know, that should definitely be looked at. Um, it depends obviously on the individual patient. Um, one thing that is clear is that at the moment atrial fibrillation is a procedure done for uh, reduction in symptoms rather than to reduce the risk of stroke. Um, even if the patient has quite a low risk of stroke um, when they go for the ablation, because we're putting uh, burns inside the atrium, they um, will have to be anticoagulated for a period of time after the ablation. So they'll have to be on anticoagulation, normally warfarin, for a period of time after the ablation. Well, there's a nurse-led AF arrhythmia clinic. Um, so often they're the first point of contact if they're not coming to the consultant leg clinic. Um, and separate to uh, formal clinic appointments, uh, our team, primarily with the arrhythmia nurses, run support groups uh, where patients with AF can get some support, discuss their symptoms and treatment options at regular um, times during the year. If, if it's a patient who ends up getting an AF ablation, uh, we'll, we'll see them perhaps uh, three months after the procedure and then depending on what the outcome is we may see them at six monthly intervals for a period up to a couple of years and then if they're well then discharge them um, or if they get referred to the clinic and we decide not to go for an ablation treatment we might alter their tablets or alter the way that their atrial fibrillation is dealt with and then refer them back either to their local cardiologist or to their GP.